Hey guys, I'm Sam. That's my solar powered car, the Sun Eater. And this is normally a YouTube channel where we look at how to put solar and extra batteries into EVs to add range to them. Um, but today I wanted to take a little foray and talk about another solar topic, the Tesla solar roof. I recently got a chance to go check out a Tesla solar roof being installed by one of the first companies to partner with them here in Texas called Good Faith Energy. And I wanted to do this little video today to share my perspective on the design specifications and price of the Tesla solar roof. Take a look at some of the things that maybe other people have done videos on them, haven't talked about, and see if it's right for you. Okay, here's that video. This is the image that shows on Tesla's website for their solar roof, and as you can see from the roof behind me in this shot, the actual product looks pretty similar. It is, aesthetically speaking, a good looking roof. I don't really mind the look of traditional panels, but I understand that the solar roof tile will be a lot more appealing to people who think that traditional panels are an eyesore. The first hurdle Tesla probably encountered when designing its solar roof is that roofs come in all shapes and sizes, so Tesla had to design these panels in such a manner that they can cover a roof of any design or shape. You can see in this image how the last step of the build was fitting the irregularly shaped panels that butt up against the ridge line in the roof. I'm sure they put a lot of thought into the design, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them tweak it a little bit more in the coming years. But what problem is the Tesla solar roof even solving? What's wrong with traditional asphalt shingles like the ones we use now? The problem is one of durability. The traditional asphalt shingles we're used to only last about 15 to 20 years, and they start to disintegrate on day one. There are actually little bits of material that fall off of them while you're taking them out of the packaging. A new roof full of shingles can cost $8,000. What else in our lives do we spend that kind of money on that starts to fall apart immediately? Anyone who has cleaned their gutters after having a roof re-shingled will be familiar with the fresh layer of sand that rapidly falls off new shingles and builds up in the gutter. Old, replaced shingles account for 11 million tons of trash generated each year in the U.S. That's disgusting. In fact, when I googled Shingle Trash Mountain while doing research for this video, the number one result you get of that Google search is a five-story tall mountain of trash shingles that is, no joke, not 10 miles away from where I live. Great. Tesla solar roof tiles are made of tempered glass and plastic polymers that will last two or three times longer than asphalt shingles, meaning they generate only half to a third as much trash over a 50 to 60 year span. Another really cool feature is the ability to replace only the specific tiles that are damaged in say like a hailstorm, while leaving the undamaged portions of the roof untouched when you do a repair. And also, if there's a big storm, I don't have to replace my whole roof. Yeah. Uh, they're designed for serviceability. That's so true. I can use a little um, tile removing tool. Okay. It's like a crowbar in a, in a way for the shingles. Yeah. Uh, and you can pop up a glass tile and slide it out, uh, take it out of its feet and slide it out. Okay. And then slide it another one, put it in its feet and push it down. And there's your, you know, busted tile versus yeah. every three four years in north texas every time there's a hailstorm, you know you're you know replacing all this crap and you know yeah. so you can't see with the traditional roof and the petroleum shingles on there you can't see where the damage to the plywood is mm. underneath that yeah. you'll have a bad hailstorm and you'll get a leak oh, but man. where's the damage That's like really... look at the shingles and tell me yeah with this you can actually see mm -hmm. on these shingles mm -hmm. How you would be able to just pop out mm -hmm. one or two of them mm -hmm. if you had one or two got cracked during a bad hailstorm. That's right. Go back in, replace those, mm -hmm. and you're good to go after what, two hours of work, maybe. Absolutely, man. And That's awesome. Not only that, but they're extremely durable. They have the highest wind rating. You know, they they're only going to get damaged if it clips a corner. Yeah. You know, if something really big clips a corner, yeah, it's probably going to get damaged. But you know, if it takes a hit in the middle. You know you're you're gonna be okay and you know the other thing is the steeper your roof plane is the less likelihood of a direct hit from hail okay so yeah. you know I'm, I'm I can't imagine I'm gonna have to replace my roof ever again that's what I'm talking about one more design feature I want to go over before we take a look at the solar tile specs is the incorporation of dummy tiles into the roof by dummy tiles I mean tiles that don't have solar cells encapsulated inside of them, they're just tempered glass. Well, why would some of the tiles not have solar cells in them? That's because the tiles with the solar cells incorporated into them are much more expensive to manufacture 
than plain glass panels, and some parts of your roof get a lot more sun than others. If you live in the northern hemisphere, the lion's share of the solar energy that falls on your house falls on the southern facing section of the roof. So we can put the expensive solar tiles on that side of the roof and the much cheaper dummy tiles on the north facing side of the roof and lower the overall cost. Here's a screenshot of Tesla's patent application for the solar roof tile and you can see that they have a silicone encapsulant layer inside of the glass tile so the solar cell can expand and contract with the heat and not develop stress cracks. That's what you want, but it's obviously more expensive to manufacture than a plain glass tile. Here are some pictures I took of the solar tile next to the dummy tile. While they look identical from a distance, if you look close, you can tell the panel on the left has the solar cells embedded in the glass. Okay, that's it for the design portion of the video. Let's move on to the solar tile specs. These are the actual specs from a Tesla solar roof tile. I'm kind of proud of this shot because I don't think this image or these exact specs are available anywhere else on the internet. Hopefully the guys over at Good Faith Energy don't tell me that I have to pull this video for disclosing trade secrets. So we can see that the Gen 3 Tesla solar roof tile generates about 58 watts at about 13 volts. That's actually kind of a low voltage for a 58 watt panel. Uh, the 50 watt panel on the hood of the Sun Eater that's of comparable size has a voltage of about 20 volts. I would guess that they run nine of these panels in series to get 120 volt, 520 watt string. 120 volt is ideal because that's what the voltage of your house is. That's the grid voltage in the US. And 500 watts or half a kilowatt is a good round building block to build up any size system you want. You want a 10 kilowatt setup? Okay, that's 20 strings of nine panels. 12 kilowatts, that's 24 strings of nine panels. Basically, the Tesla solar roof allows you to build up to the power output that you need using the solar tiles and then fill in the rest of the roof with the cheaper, more durable dummy tiles. Okay, so we understand the design aspects of the solar roof and the specs of the solar tiles. Now let's talk price. How much is a solar glass roof going to set you back? Most system for roughly 10 kilowatt system on an average size house cost $60,000. Ouch. How does that ever work out to be a good deal for us? Well, first off, Mo is smart and purchased a solar roof before the federal solar tax rebate decreases at the end of this year. That means he gets 26% or $15,000 off the top right up front in a tax rebate. Next, the system is technically a brand new roof, so the perfect time to buy it is after a hailstorm or a tornado has trashed your roof, and the insurance company just cut you a check for eight to ten thousand dollars. So if we time it right, that sixty thousand dollar purchase is down to thirty-five thousand dollars after the insurance and tax rebates. Thirty-five thousand financed over fifteen years at about three percent makes the monthly payment on our solar roof about two hundred and forty-one dollars. Subtract the average monthly electric bill, because we don't get one anymore, the sunlight pays our bills now, of $150, and our increase in monthly out-of-pocket expense is only $91. That's not crazy, especially considering the house just went way up in value, and 15 years from now, the payments fall off and our bills go down by about $100 a month permanently. So, obviously the solar roof isn't perfect for everyone, but if you are doing new construction and you have to spend 10 grand on the roof anyways, or you just got hit by a hailstorm and you have the insurance check, and you can purchase it in 2020 and take advantage of that 26% tax rebate, it might be something you should look into. Okay, that's everything I know about the Tesla solar roof. I'm going to play my full interviews with Clayton and Mo here in case I missed anything. I'm going to go ahead and skip the economy via the week uh, this week, but it will be back in next week's episode. I'll see you guys then. More of the road than us like this distance. Got quite the camera here. I was expecting something a little uh, more beefy, but hey, I'm sure. If, if I'm that sure didn't tell done. you low budget, then <laughs> I don't know. It's what all low doing. budget. All right. It's a GoPro. It's yeah. I love it. Um, and you guys have done three of these now. Uh, we've done five and the sixth in, in progress too. So we'll call this one number five. But this one's for the owner, the CEO. So uh, you know, this is a little extra special. We'll take a little extra care with this one. Okay. 
what's um, and you guys have done the traditional solar panels on sure. the roof too, where you just mount them on the bracket. Yeah, exactly. How does this compare to that kind of build? Totally different. Not even in the same ballpark. We kind of use a, a you know a different crew. This is more of a uh, a roofing job uh, yeah. than a solar job. It's kind okay. of a different skill set. Um, you know, different equipment. It's a totally different ball game when it comes to install. But uh, you know, new challenge for us, and you know, huge market for it. Every home in Texas should have one of these. And uh, you know, we're having fun learning from Tesla, learning from you know the first couple of installs, and uh, you know, got a lot of work ahead of us. So. Absolutely. Um, what are the advantages in your mind of going with a solar shingle as opposed to getting you know panels and kind of trying to fit as cram as many as you can yeah. onto the roof uh you know the biggest advantage i think is the look and the aesthetic people are paying a premium for a premium product with this um and they know that there's no secret you know they're they're more expensive yes but um you get a beautiful looking roof at the end of it with you know 30 years plus of solar production um nobody's ever going to say oh those are ugly or we you know we can't can't do those in our hoa that kind of thing yeah so um i'd say you know that's one of the advantages you're also you know getting a is a dc system um you know typically we'll do ac systems with our uh, traditional solar panels and micro inverters so just a little bit of difference there you, you know and i'm sure our audience mostly knows about the difference yeah. between ac and dc yeah. systems so um, uh, you know lots of advantages there um you know super durable everything it's it's finally this is v3 so v1 and v2 didn't quite kind of yeah. quite work with tesla um but this is the one that's really going to hit the mainstream and be um you know be on the roofs here you know all across the country all across the world here yeah uh, as soon as we can okay and because most people watching this have probably never seen a tesla solar roof tile off of the roof this is what it actually looks like on both sides so you've got your mc4 connectors right here and these little plastic tabs just facilitate a kind of easy kind of plug and play just like you're putting a puzzle together They'll, the next layer of tiles will just snap onto there and i don't know if this will shine through on the camera or not but underneath this hard laminate you can see the individual solar cells and uh, Clayton, what's this board? This is a uh, this is about a 50 watt. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a 58.5 uh, watt. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so each each uh, whole tile, all cells put together at that 58 watts. So you know, string them out all across the roof and then all the way up, and uh, get get the KW number you're looking for for your home for your you know your desired offset. You can do uh, so. Th so this house in particular is at a 100% scheduled offset. Um, okay. This, our CEO is getting a power wall. He has a Tesla Model 3, so he's got the whole, you know, the whole system. But he's actually not getting, you know, these uh, the producing shingles on every part of his roof. He doesn't need. Them. He doesn't uh, have that much. I mean, he's got a newer home. It's well insulated. All those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, so he actually has solar on the south side, on the west side, and then he's got dummy tiles on the north, east, and on the uh, on the east side. Okay. So, uh, and the dummy tiles look exactly like the other tiles. Exactly, yeah. Look exactly the same. You can't tell a difference unless you're this close looking, but if you're driving by or walking through the neighborhood, you have to get really, really close to, to tell. But uh, that's okay. kind of the idea. It all blends in. It all looks like one beautiful, uh, you know, it's a beautiful roof first, and then, oh yeah, by the way, it's also, uh, you know, a whole solarized system. So. And the dummy yeah. tiles make a lot of sense on the north side mm -hmm. because I imagine they're a quarter of the price as the solar sure, ones. yeah. Price points are the big thing, so you don't want to pay for something you don't need. Yeah. Uh, he could have put like a 1517 KW system yeah. in here, but didn't have the need for it. He would be overproducing and keep sending it back, yeah. and you know didn't need to. So he just you know, said, "This is my desired level, and that's all I need, and that's what I do." Okay. Yeah. So you can still dial in of course. exactly what oh, yeah. you want your output that's to the be whole idea and we'll just have this. that many solar tiles on the roof yeah. and once you hit that number everything else is dummy tiles you know the, the cheap ones yeah, yeah. We, All right. uh, we ran you know some modeling with tesla he did a couple of months worth of usage on his home uh before we you know we did any of this just to kind of see uh get a gauge of what he's really going to need and um you know we did some tweaking with tesla we said hey add more panels now add less panels okay now that we got another month or two of data we can you know scale it back a little bit and this is the final product tesla was great with us they sent us all new design plans and you know put everything together just the way we want it and, and here we are i am here with mo today um in front of his house where he is getting his tesla solar roof installed and uh mo who's installing the tesla solar roof on your house 
so Good Faith Energy is installing it. Uh, Good Faith Energy is a company based here in North Texas. Uh, I founded it in 2014, and uh, it's definitely a dream come true to finally see my roof getting solar on it. Yeah? Yes, sir. So how'd the whole process work? Were you just at home one day and Elon called you up and he's like, <laughs> hey, Mo, how do you want to install some Pretty uh, much, some man. Me and Elon go way back. <laughs> uh, no, we... Um, I actually, before buying the house, it's a new build, 2019, okay. I said I want pre-approval from the HOA to give me a solar panel system you know, approved. So okay. they basically gave me the pre-approval, but then we got our certification early this year for the Tesla roof. And so I was like, this is a great opportunity to go ahead and, and do a solar roof and showcase it. And it's a very high visibility, high traffic area. Yeah. Right on the corner. Um, so I tried to get it approved. HOA rejected it. They said, hey, the only approved roofing material in this neighborhood is Weatherwood Shingle. Okay. So we went back and forth. Uh, about four months later, they finally approved it under the notion that this is actually a solar system and not a roof and you can't deny it. Okay. Um, so now, you know, it makes it infinitely easier for everyone else in the neighborhood to also go solar uh, oh, yeah. with the Tesla roof as well, hopefully. Um, but then after that, uh, we basically got the permits, went to Tesla, got the designs finalized, um, submitted the interconnection applications with the utility, and uh, placed the order for the material. Uh, take, took about uh, 60 days for all the materials to show up. Okay. Um, even then, some things are still missing, so some yeah. of the logistics uh, are still in, in the works. You guys are very early entry into this very program. Early. So One we, of the, wait, I think you were the first oh yeah. company in North Texas to be That's doing right. these installs. That's yeah. really cool. It is, man. I kept pestering my Tesla rep, and he says it like Mo's timing was impeccable. Yeah. Because I kept bugging him and saying, when the Tesla roof is coming, I want to be your first guy in Texas. I want to be your first CI. You know, I want to be on the first plane to, to train. So uh, when he when I called him, I called him on a Friday afternoon and said, what's up with the solar roof? And this was in December. He said, Mo, we're actually doing our first training in California next week. So um, I was sitting there with my partner, Michael, said we're flying out and we're, you know, got a little get giggly. Uh, and um, and so here we are, man. OK, now you, you flew out to California for the, the training, the orientation on how to install these. I'm assuming this must be a little more complicated than a normal solar install because you guys had to fly all the way out there to take yeah. the course. So what are what what makes this build different than your traditional where you're just mountain panels on a bracket? Great question. I mean, this is a full-on roofing job. Um, you know, I was I was we were talking earlier. I was saying this is a crew that doesn't exist. Why? Because yeah. you need a roofer, a copper smith, uh, and an electrician all on site. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to have. Uh, very, uh, you know, concise and detail-oriented uh, construction base, right? You have to have a guy on site managing the entire process. So, you know, the way that the install actually happens is you start with demo day. All right, we're demoing if it's an existing roof, we're taking off the, the damaged shingles or whatever have you, throwing it all away. Once we get all of the shingles off the roof, then we put the underlayment. I'm sure we got... Uh, um, footage of the underlayment it's two layers yeah, that we yeah. put on the roof uh, once all the underlayments on then we start putting up what they call the drip edge um, so the drip edge are all your deck level metals um, so everything going up the hips the valleys the rakes the ridges and so on okay. um, and so after you put your deck level metals that's when you start installing your feet is what they call them and then the solar tiles slide right into the feet and get pushed down, get nailed into the roof, uh, and there's uh, basically a self-aligning capability of those tiles. So once you put a few on, they self-align, and it's very easy to make sure that uh, they're, you know, very, oh yeah, you know, parallel so on the roof. You need a lot of special training to know how to install it. Oh yeah. But the pieces themselves mm -hmm. have been intentionally designed mm -hmm. to be very plug and play kind of um, not a whole lot of room for mistakes because everything fits real self real crisp together correct and also if there's a big storm I don't have to replace my whole roof yeah uh, they're designed for serviceability That's so true. I can use a little um, tile removing tool okay. it looks like a crowbar in a, in a way for the shingles yeah uh, and you can pop up a glass tile 
and slide it out. Uh, take it out of its feet and slide it out. Okay. And then slide it another one, put it in its feet and push it down. And there's your, you know, busted tile versus yeah. every three, four years in North Texas, every time there's a hailstorm, you know, you're, you know, replacing all this crap and, you know, yeah. so. You can't see with the traditional roof and the petroleum shingles on there, you can't see where the damage to the plywood is mm. underneath that. Yeah. You'll have a bad hailstorm and you'll get a leak, oh, but man. where's the damage? That's like, right. look at the shingles and tell me. Yeah. With this, you can actually see mm -hmm. on these shingles mm -hmm. how you would be able to just pop out mm -hmm. one or two of them mm -hmm. if you had one or two got cracked during a bad hailstorm. That's right. Go back in, replace those, mm -hmm. and you're good to go after two hours of work maybe absolutely man and that's awesome. not only that but they're extremely durable they have the highest wind rating you know they they're only going to get damaged if it clips a corner yeah you know if something really big clips a corner yeah it's probably going to get damaged but you know if it takes a hit in the middle you know you're you're going to be okay and you know the other thing is the steeper your roof plane is the less likelihood of a direct hit from hail Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't imagine I'm going to have to replace my roof ever again. That's excellent. That's what they, that's what they were going for, and that's what makes it so superior to the, the method. We have, I, you got a 10.5 kilowatt array. A uh, 9.5. 9.5. Yep. We're actually almost exactly the same size. We have, we have like 11.1 on our roof, mm -hmm. but it's the old school. So yeah. just the panels on the... Which is great too. You on know? The it, yeah. it, was, it was a home run for us. Mm -hmm. But we haven't had to replace the roof yet. Yeah. And when that happens, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Uh -huh. um, whereas this, I can definitely see it being a lot more convenient for the user mm -hmm. after the fact. Another really cool thing about the roof is it has ridge vents. It's designed, it has ridge vents at the top. So it allows for increased uh, ventilation from the attic. So you don't really need a solar attic fan or anything like that. Uh, obviously, there's a, a, a combination here of producing and non-producing tiles. Um, so my north face and my east face are all non-producing. And then my south and west face are all producing tiles. Okay. Um, so that's where you'll see the uh, slight t uh, hint of a, of a solar cell. But it's, uh, it's, it's actually very hard to, to see it, you know, while you're driving by or while you're looking at it. Okay, and producing on half versus unproducing on like the north side of the house, mm. why is that a good deal? So, uh, you know, solar is all based on sunlight, you know, solar power is based on sunlight. So the north facing roof in the southern, or the north facing roof in the northern hemisphere is very, very bad for performance. If you want to put panels on your south facing roof uh, in states like Texas where it's super hot, it's great to have panels on the west facing roof because it clips your peak usage during the summer and reduces your bills and, and, and has a lot of value uh, during those late summer afternoons when you're peaking. So um, you love roof planes that have good sunlight exposure and the north isn't the recommended. North is, and I'm assuming those dummy tiles must be probably more durable and a heck of a lot cheaper Correct. than the solar ones. Okay, so you can mitigate your costs a lot Correct. by just saying this is the optimum place to put the, the panels and the rest will, will use the cheaper dummy panels Correct. and slap them in there. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Um, thanks, Mo, for your time today. You're welcome, man. Um, good luck on your company, Good Faith Energy, Thank um, you. for your Tesla Solar Roof if you're anywhere near Dallas, Texas. And uh, now you know.